My name is Kevin Riley, a former Philadelphia Eagle linebacker back in the day, 73 through 75. Also played a little bit with the New England Patriots during the 1975 season. Yeah, I was 25 years old. I was an NFL athlete. I was playing with the hometown Philadelphia Eagles. This was a dream come true for somebody who grew up in Wilmington, Delaware. And here I was, 25 years old. I weighed 235 pounds. I had a 400-pound bench press. I ran a 47540. You think you're invincible. You think nothing will ever go wrong. And you are the guy going around to the Children's Hospital and AI DuPont and visiting some of the less fortunate people. Never believing that someday you will be in that situation. And just five years later, I woke up in Sloan Kettering Hospital, minus my left arm, my left shoulder, and four ribs due to a scar tissue tumor that was taken almost 33 years ago and had to learn to adjust. And one day I was having a major league pity party. And that's when one person by the name of Rocky Blyer, who I respected because of what he had gone through during the war in Vietnam, where he had his leg so damaged that they wanted to fuse it at the knee. He refused to allow them to do that. And Rocky not only made it back to pro football, but he's got four Super Bowl rings. One of the things that I was told very, very early on by Rocky Blyer, consistent persistence. Uh, after you fail is really something that many people don't have in their you know skill sets and it's just funny that that day Rocky came into my life we knew each other we weren't great friends but somehow he knew that I was in need of a guy of his stature to talk me out of my spiraling down mental attitude and so I say that because we never know when we are the last rung in the ladder we are the last safety net for somebody who is spiraling down. And sometimes what we do in 15 seconds or sometimes 15 hours as a caretaker makes all the difference in the world to the person you're talking to. This volunteer walked into my room and his name was Frank. He was mid 60s and he had lost his arm uh, in World War II. And uh, he was there as a volunteer and he was there to counsel me on some of the obstacles and and some of the uh, you know, things that I would face uh, going forward. And then he asked me to pull on his tie. And when I did, it was one of those clip-on ties that I had worn to school when I was in grade school. I was the oldest of six kids and my mother didn't have time to tie my tie before I went to school each day. And it came off in my hand. And he said, uh, now if you're gonna have to wear a tie each day, you're gonna have to get these clip-on ties. And I said, why is that? And he said, well, he said, because you can never tie your tie again. I've been trying for over 25 years, the same with my shoes, and it's impossible, it can't be done. And if you go down to Fifth and Madison Avenue and you use my name, there's a little tie shop down there, they'll give you a 10% discount. And don't forget to get at least a half dozen because everybody leaves there with only a couple and they really need a, dozen, a half a dozen or more. And I said, well, why will I have to have clip-on ties? Are you sure? He said, you'll never be able to tie your tie again. It can't be done one-handed. I've been trying for over 25 years. What do you call on? What is the power that you call on? Is it your faith? Is it your friends? Is it your family? I call them the four Fs, faith, family, friends, and fortitude. And in that fortitude, I found from not only my own experience, but other people who have been sick, that have overcome sickness, that have overcome major crises in their life, is there's a thing called the human spirit. And I will tell you that in my experience, there's a little uh, phrase, and I don't know who said this, but the human spirit is tougher than anything that can happen to it. If you combine that with consistent persistence, you can overcome those by living those two traits of just going out, putting one foot forward every day, and trusting that somewhere deep down, you have the gumption, you have the courage, you have the fortitude to make things better. But during the journey, it hasn't been just my experience. I've had the opportunity to counsel many people that have had illnesses, many, many amputees, including some of the veterans that come back from Iraq and Afghanistan uh, down at Walter Reed Hospital. And um, they have been an inspiration to me. And sometimes when you are out there giving to someone else, or at least thinking that you are giving to someone else, you can be surprised by the inspiration that comes back to you, not only in equal terms, but sometimes double of what you are giving. So I've experienced that also. Think about the things that are really important. And I go back to faith, family, 
friends, and your own fortitude. Uh, God will help you move mountains, no doubt about it. Make sure you bring your own wheelbarrow because he's going to ask you to put an effort into it.